everybody, it's Blenny back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something that may be very controversial within the disability community. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please stick around. So what am I going to be talking about today that's so controversial? Today I'm going to be talking about the what if. What if I could be disability free, symptom free for 24 hours? What would I do? If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do hope that you like this video. Give it a thumbs up and decide to stay and subscribe. We really would love to have you here. If you're a continuing subscriber, thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Please remember that what I'm about to say today is only my opinion and my opinion only. And I know that it's not going to be something that everybody will agree on, but that's okay. I just want to talk about it so that if there's other people like me out there who like to think about the what ifs, just know that you're not alone. In case you don't know me, let me quickly introduce myself. Hi, my name is Blemmy. I'm a 35 year old woman who lives with spastic diplegia cerebral palsy. Check out some of my other videos to see how I walk and how cerebral palsy affects me on a day to day basis. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so what if I was symptom free, disability free for 24 hours? I woke up, poof, and it was gone. I like to play this game in my head probably a little too much but it's something that keeps me, I don't want to say sane, but it just keeps me more level-headed to kind of imagine what life would be like if I didn't have some of these obstacles that I do have in my daily life. So in no particular order, because I really don't know what I would do first if I woke up and I magically had no symptoms or disability for 24 hours. But here are some of the things on my list that I would be sure to include if that ever happened. So I'm Canadian and in Canada, we are huge hockey fans. And I'm no exception. I'm a huge Edmonton Oilers fan. One year, it's going to be our year and we're going to win that Stanley Cup again. Nevertheless, I have had visions and dreams my whole life of putting on ice skates, getting the hockey stick out, and playing a game of hockey. But not only playing a game of hockey, but what I really want to do is smash someone up into the boards. I don't know why. Maybe I just want to get out some pent up frustration. I'm not sure, but I couldn't think of anything more fun than getting all dressed up in hockey gear, getting on the ice and just smashing someone into the boards. All in good fun, of course. It's part of the game of hockey. Now, when I'm out about in public, people stare at me a lot. If you haven't seen my staring video, I will link it up here. Go check it out. But I would love, love to be able to go out into public, go to the mall and just walk around and just be completely anonymous. People wouldn't notice me. People wouldn't gawk at me. I could just be me and not be noticed by anybody. I think that would be at first a little, a little weird, a little bizarre, because I've always had people stare at me, always, always, always. But I think it would be so relaxing just to be able to go and be and just melt into the crowd and not stick out and not have people stare and gawk all the time. Now in the same vein, the next thing I would do is I would go for a run. <laughs> I know it seems really simple, but I, when I was younger, in my late teens, early 20s, I was a lot more mobile than I am now. How I walk still looked the same, my feet still turned in, my heels still up, but I was able to do a lot more on my own without walking aids. And at that time, I decided, hey, why not go for an evening run? Well, <laughs> although I was just going for a run, people literally stopped me on the street and asked if I was okay and asked if I needed medical assistance. And I thought, well, I guess this isn't 
fun to do for other people so I'll just stop running because it's causing a scene really so I would love to be able to go for an evening run put on my headphones put on my running shoes get lost in my thoughts work out my body I think it would just be so relaxing just to be able to zen out be with your body be with your music be with your thoughts and just run and be free wouldn't that be fantastic oh I would love to be able to experience that. In my last video, I talked about falling and how my brother taught me how to break fall in his judo classes. If you haven't watched that one, I'll link it up here for you as well. But in that sentiment, my brother and my mom both took judo when my brother was young. And they both excelled in it quite extensively. My brother was a national fighter and was really good and my mom uh, coached mostly and you know did the teacher sensei thing but they ended up getting their black belts at the same time um, the first I think it was the first mother-son duo in Alberta to get their black belts at the same time in judo which was really special and I was super proud of them but I always felt really left out when it came to judo it was something that the two of them did and it made them super close and oh if I could be symptom free for 24 hours I would get on that mat <laughs> and I would see how much I learned from just watching them I bet I learned quite a bit I actually think in my mind I could execute some of those throws and hold downs quite well after watching them for years and years and years but I would love to just get on the mat and see if I could toss those two around and pull my own weight with judo. Oh, I think that would be so much fun just to horse around with those two for a little bit. When we're young, we go out and play with our friends and we horse around and we do all that, that sort of thing. And I was always limited to what I could do to how I could keep up with my friends. So I think that if I was symptom free for 24 hours, I would love to just be able to climb a tree. I don't know. I think it'd be so much fun just to climb a tree and to sit up in the tree branches and maybe just read a little book. Wouldn't that be peaceful? Wouldn't that be fun? I don't know, something that I just would love to experience. Another thing that I would love to experience is be able to horse around with my nieces and nephews. They are the sweetest children. I have currently four nieces and nephews and they are sweet and they know my limitations and they know that I'm different. But I would love to be able to just play with them, run and play tag, horse around, take them shopping, take them places and not have to worry about my limitations and my disability. I just, I would love to be able to experience their childhoods with them in that way. I think it'd be so much fun. Now I know within the disability community, a lot of people don't want to talk about what it would mean to be cured. Disability is a part of their everyday identity and they wouldn't change that. That I respect so much and kudos to you if that's you, but that's not me. I, if there was a cure out there for me, I would be first in line to take it. Um, and these are just some of the things that I would try on that 24 hours, even if it was just 24 hours that I was cured, I would try it. Um, I just, I, I'm curious to know what life would have been like, you know, what if, what if, what if things were different? Who would I be? Is would I be completely a different person? Did my disability shape me so much to the core that it would change me completely? Or would I still be me? You know, just more able-bodied and able to do things and to enjoy other things in life that I just can't do right now. You know, I don't think the what if game is that dangerous if you don't dwell on it. You know, once in a while, if you think, oh, you know, what would I do? I think that's healthy. I think that's okay. But again, just my opinion. So these are just some of the things that I would do if I woke up one day and I had 24 hours to be able-bodied. What would you do? Are you disabled? If you are one of my disabled viewers, 
what would be one of the first things that you would do? Or would you not want to experience what it's like for 24 hours or to be cured? Let me know in the comments below. I am interested to know how many people would try an opportunity and how many people would just not want to do it and they're that comfortable within their own skin. Thank you so much for watching today. I really do appreciate it. I hope that we can all be respectful in the comments below and know that everybody views their disability a little bit differently and some people really would like to experience life without it and some people don't and that's okay. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.